Welcome. This is what is happening on the Sun today, the 30th of September 2011. We may have a coronal mass ejection heading straight for the Earth, but more of that later. But first, our trivia question. It is in the form of a series of cryptic clues. By its side, two winged sentries guard a star chart. Touching their toes brings you luck, and you will need it near where they are located. The star chart shows where the planets and stars were on the 30th of September 1935, when this marvel was dedicated. It brings light and life to Paris, Monte Carlo, and even New York. It can even reach the stratosphere. What is it? The answer will be given at the end. We've had just four sea flares in the last 24 hours. A long duration event from region 1302, and some impulsive flares from region 1305, where most of the growth has occurred in the last day. So let's take a look at the active regions and see what's going on. We still have six officially numbered regions on the disk, plus now we have three new unnumbered regions. Regions 1301 and 1304 are getting very close to the northwest limb and have re been reduced to a single spot, so you can't really see a great deal about what's going on there. So we'll start with region 1302 in the northwest. Noah says that the area of this region has reduced significantly over the last 24 hours. And it might well have done. There's been some decay in that uh, second leader spot and also in the trailer spot. It looks a lot more broken up and smaller. However, there has been the development of some satellite spots between the two areas and also to the north. Next we turn our attention to region 1305 and 1306. 1305 has produced two of the sea flares we've seen and I think it's fairly evident why a semicircle of small spots has developed out ahead of the main spot. But it's this development that has probably caused the flaring that we've seen. Region 1306 has produced no activity and hasn't really changed a lot. Now let's take a look at region 1307 near the northeast limb. It too doesn't seem to have changed a great deal, with the exception that there's a small sunspot that's developed just to its north and west. It's only a single spot at the moment, but uh, it's worth keeping an eye on just in case it starts to grow. At long last, we've got a couple of regions in the southern hemisphere. There's a fairly modest sized region coming over the southeast limb, and out ahead of it there's a single spot that's developed overnight. I've added here the magnetic image on the same spatial scale. You can see the new region coming over the southeast limb, although it's very foreshortened. The small spot region is marked here, but of more interest to me is this very strong and compact area that has appeared to its west. That may be a sign of a new region about to emerge, so let's keep an eye on it and see if there are any spots there tomorrow. Now let's take a look at the evolution of these uh, regions over the last 48 hours. And here again you may want to go into full screen mode and run through this uh, section several times looking at each of the individual regions. I would focus though on region 1305. Unfortunately Helio Viewer is still on the blink so we're going to have to make do with these 48 hour quick look movies from SDO. In the transition region movie there's a fairly major filament eruption in the southwest. Uh, about halfway through the movie and may be associated with this coronal mass ejection. In the low temperature coronal movie what I'd like you to look at is the level of interconnection and interaction between all these regions uh, stretching across the northern hemisphere. It's quite remarkable. In the high temperature coronal image from the SXI instrument you can see there are two regions coming over the northeast and southeast limb respectively. Interestingly, the one in the northeast seems to have this very faint, large cusp-shaped loop stretching to the north. That's usually the sign of a major eruption just having occurred, so I would expect that there's been some sort of coronal mass ejection on the far side of the sun. The image also shows a large coronal hole in the southwest, which is likely to become geo-effective in the next day or two, so we can expect solar wind speeds to start increasing. In the Soho Chronograph movies, you can see towards the end of the sequence a halo CME that's heading towards the Earth. This was measured to be about 650 kilometers per second uh, using the stereo data and also radio sources. So this is not a very uh, fast CME, uh, but it will remain to see whether it's geo-effective or not. Towards the end of the C3 movie, you can see an eruption off of the northwest limb. In the solar wind data from ACE, we can see that while the temperature and the density of the solar wind has remained relatively constant, as predicted, the um, velocity of the solar wind has been steadily dropping. The high energy electron flux at geosynchronous altitudes has uh, stabilized but at a relatively high level and we're still in the decay phase of the proton event from the X flares. 
Goes 19 image shows us that the auroral zones are relatively quiet and confined to the um, Arctic Circle. Meanwhile, the KP index is varying between 0 and 4, but seems to be on a quieting trend. And NOAA has had no space weather alerts for the last 24 hours. So in summary then, the X-ray background is still at the B4 level, the sunspot number has fallen to 99, radio sun intensity has increased to 137, solar wind speed has dropped to 430 km per second with a density of less than 1 proton per cubic centimeter, and geospace conditions are currently quiet. My forecast for the next 24 hours is that C flares are still likely, M flares are possible, X flares are unlikely, the sunspot number will likely drift higher, coronal mass ejections are likely, solar wind speed will drift higher, and geomagnetic storms are still possible. In the slightly longer term, we can see that behind the east end we have a couple of very substantial regions which should make the next couple of days quite interesting. The answer to the trivia question is the Hoover Dam. And if you like shaggy dog stories, literally shaggy dog stories, Google the Hoover Dam, every man's dog and no man's dog. It's a, it's a very heartwarming story, except for at the end. So that's it for today. Keep safe. Bye for now.